This video, I'm going to show you how you can set up your audio interface with Logic Pro X. And not to worry, if you're not using Logic Pro X, you can still follow along with this video. The principles are the same. Three quick sections to this video are I'm going to show you how you can set up with Logic Pro X your audio interface. Then I'm going to show you how you can add tracks and record tracks and audio with your audio interface. And then we'll go through some common questions of audio interfaces and which one you might want to buy, which ones you might want to avoid, why they cost, why there is such a difference in cost, like cheap and expensive, and what might be the best one for you to get right now. So if those are the three video sections, let's get into section one right now, which is just getting everything connected and setting up. You might have something like these, the Red Scarlet or like a, a Scarlet Pro, or maybe you have the Universal Audio Apollo Twin or the Apollo One. For me, I'm using the Apogee one. It doesn't matter, like I say, what audio interface you have, the fundamentals are the same. So each audio interface is going to have three like major plugs, let's say, uh, or components that you'd plug in something in. And that would be a power supply. Every audio interface needs to be plugged into the wall to get some power. And there will be a plug where you can actually plug in your microphone or your instruments. And depending on what type of audio interface you have, there might be multiple uh, inputs for different mics, or there might be only one. For example, I'm using the Apogee and there is only one input. And the third component plug would be the connection um, to your computer. Most of the time it's through USB. So connect it to power, connect it to your computer, and connect your instrument or guitar, mic, whatever you want to record. When you're in Logic Pro X, you'll notice as soon as you plug in the USB that's connected to your audio interface, Logic will recognize that and it will ask you if you want this to be your default input and output settings. And you can go ahead and click OK. Here I am in Logic and I'm actually recording my voice out of this microphone right now. And that's why I have this video audio track in the background going here. And so we can go to settings by going up here and going Logic Pro preferences, going to general, or we can also be clicking on command comma, and this will bring up our settings preferences. Here, what we wanna focus on, the only thing we're gonna focus on right now is this output device and input device. Input device is the um, where you want the sound to be coming in from, and mine is the one V2. So that's my audio interface. And in order to set up your audio interface, you're going to want to look for the name of your interface and then click it here. So if it's the Red Scarlet, it will likely say Scarlet. If it's the Apollo, it will likely say the Apollo. Output device is where you want to hear the sound when you play back your audio in Logic. And for me, I'm just using the built-in output right now. I can have the output also set to the audio interface because sometimes you might have headphones that are connected to your audio interface because you can have output out of your interface as well. It's up to you on how you wanna wire things, but most of the time, if your audio interface does have like um, monitor outputs, you would wanna connect your studio monitors to like your interface, and then you can have your headphones to your interface as well, and you can switch back and forth nicely with a button by um, listening to headphones and then listening to studio monitors. The simple audio interfaces like the Scarlett or even mine, the Apogee one, doesn't have that functionality where you can switch back and forth between monitors and headphones because of its slim down approach. Press apply, and now you're set up to start recording audio, recording guitar, recording anything from the interface. So let's do that now. Section two of this video is now recording audio with your audio interface. Um, I have three different tracks here, not including my video audio that you can see going on. This is my voice. We'll take a look at that later when we play with the gain. But let's say we want to record vocals. By default, a lot of the audio interfaces uh, are have your input set up correctly already, especially if you're just if you just have an audio inter interface one, like one channel. Um, but we're gonna wanna make sure that the input we have on our interface, the numbered input is the same numbered input on Logic. And what I mean by that is if we have like a few different channels on our interface, maybe one, two, three, we're gonna wanna make sure if we plug in our microphone into input two in our audio interface, we're gonna wanna make sure on our track here that it says input two. We wanna make sure those two line up. For example, um, this microphone is plugged into input one on my audio interface. So I'm gonna go here to this vocal and I'm gonna to go to the inspector window here and then make sure that my input is at 
input one. With our guitar track, we're gonna want this to be input two. And so we can plug our guitar in the second input of our Apogee and record guitar and vocals at the same time doing multi-track recording. Okay, the next part is how to actually record your vocals and you wanna press record and get that in there. Is there anything else you have to do with the audio interface? The answer is yes. We need to set the appropriate amount of gain that we're using on our microphone. Basically, it's just it's just gain and there's a knob on your interface for like the Red Scarlet Pro. Um, it's just a knob that you would turn on the, inter on the Apogee here. You can see it's just a knob that I'm turning. So you wanna set up the gain on your interface before you start recording. So you're, you make sure that you're recording at the right levels. And if you don't do this, then you could end up recording like not enough audio at all, at all where you can't pick up any audio signal or you could end up recording too much audio and then you're peaking and then it will destroy the audio track and you won't be able to use it. So you need to find the right levels and I'll show you that right now. A perfect example is using this video audio track that I have right here. And you can see as I'm speaking, my um, audio signal is going through at around, um, over on the left here, you can see at a negative 5.9. It's nice and green and that's where we want it to be really like, maybe up to negative four, but then we're getting into dangerous territory because it's going to start getting yellow at around negative two, negative one, and you wouldn't want to go past anything zero. You can still record at a negative 10, even a negative 12 um, dB because we'll always be able to pump that up later with compression and really getting it louder. But if it's like negative 30 or even lower, it's going to be hard, harder to pump that volume up because we're going to be really also pumping the volume up around the room and everything else that the mic ha um, has captured. And so a lot of the times when that happens is you're making um, the hissing noise of the room sound really loud and that could make your tracks really muddy. Let's do a live example now of increasing and decreasing the gain on the audio interface and showing you what it looks like on the audio track. So I'm going through at that you know nice green level here and I'm going to turn down the gain and watch what happens to the audio signal. I'm just gonna keep talking, 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 keep talking. Now you won't see any vocal uh, audio at all. It's all coming through now the audio on my camera and I'm gonna increase the audio um, gain on the interface and you'll see I'm gonna keep talking keep talking, keep talking, and it will soon come in. Keep talking, keep talking, keep talking. <laughs> Sorry, keep talking. Okay, come on, keep talking, there it comes. Keep talking, and I'm gonna have that come in. Let's see, if I keep talking and raising it and raising it and raising it, it's gonna come in and we'll start to peak. We'll peak a little bit. Let's just show you what that looks like. So now we're at negative seven, so now I'm peaking. So you don't want that to happen. So if you don't know what audio interface to get, or if you're looking to buy a new one, you're starting at ground zero, what do you buy and why is there such a difference in price if all the audio interfaces are doing the same thing? The two biggest differences I would say when it comes to audio interfaces are like the actual size and how many channels you're getting from an audio interface. For example, my Apogee One only has one channel. Um, you can get audio interfaces, you know, up to 16 channels if you want. Um, you know, maybe you are recording many people at the same time. Um, so that's a big difference. The other big difference would be the quality of like the preamp and the sound card of the actual interface. W what it is the computer in there and um, how it's exchanging that audio signal to a digital signal. How good is that quality? But let's say you're just getting started and you want to record some vocals, some guitars, get used to it. I would go with something cheap, even get something used to just get your feet wet and get recording and making some music. Hope this video helped. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and feel free to check out some of my music. It's all available everywhere online and hope to see you in the next video.